Welcome back once again friends. In this video, we are going to continue our pixel art activity. Remember previously we had a code which could create us one row of squares. In this video, we'll see how we can extend that logic to create a two dimensional grid of squares, something like what we are doing here. Now, really this should not be very surprising, neither should this be very difficult because we have done this in the past. So let's just recall something that we had done in the past, which was in the Brick Breaker game we had placed sprites in also a two-dimensional grid. And if you remember, the way we did it was that we first built this one row. Uh, that was the inner loop, here, inner repeat loop. And then we had an outer repeat loop, which could do, uh, you know, all these five rows, right? Now, there's a detailed video I have on this particular thing, which goes really detailed into how this whole thing comes together. But you can imagine that the same exact idea can be applied here. Remember, the way repeat is being implemented now in Python is basically a for loop. So I'm going to end up with a for for inside a for, right? Now, that way I'll end up a two-dimensional grid. Uh, but of course, given that it's Python, uh, given that indentation plays a big role, we have to be a little bit careful. So let's just do it for ourselves and see how this works out, right? So what I'm going to do is that I'll, I'll come in here. Remember, I have this code for just one row. I'm going to just simplify this a little bit. Uh, for now, I'll remove, let's say, these if-else conditions. And instead, I will just, you know, draw a rectangle and I will have increment of the x value, right? So that uh, uh, this just like a homogeneous grid created, right? Now, I'll remove all of this because I don't need this. Also, I'm going to, you know, create, let's say, these squares a little bit differently. So what I'll do is that I will have them create, uh, you know, I'll get them created on top of my screen. Uh, because then I can cover the entire screen. So I put my x value to minus 150, which is the initial x. And also, I'm going to put my y as, say, plus 150, right? Now, again, this is no uh, like no compulsion. It's just that the way I'm doing it, so my row will appear somewhere on top. Also, I will make my squares, say, 15, centi 15 pixels, you know, 15 by 15 pixels. And hence, since I made that 15, I'll also make this 15, right? So what is going to happen? Notice, if you see carefully, I'm starting with minus 150. Each square is 15, so I'm going to end up with from the, uh, in the left i mean zero is the middle right so i'm on the left side of zero i'll end up with 10 squares on the right side of zero i'll end up with 10 squares and likewise on the y direction right so if i run this now notice what happens is that i get one row of 15 by 15 pixels right now i'm going to create many rows of doing this the way i'll do that is i'll also define a, a variable called n rows equals to say 20. now remember i have to repeat this process of creating one row 20 times right so by n rows time right so what i can do is to create one more for loop this time i call it say for kk in range uh, n rows now you know again remember i must have a colon here and everything from this point needs to be indented because this for loop is now inside the previous for loop right uh, i mean the new for loop now Notice that once I have drawn my, uh, you know, once I've drawn my, uh, uh, let's say the last square, I must set my x value back to this point, which means I can go and say x val equals to minus 150. And I will change my y value so that the, uh, the, uh, the turtle comes 15 pixels down, right? So that again, 15, because height is also 15, I want all these guys to be touching each other. So I'm going to say y val equals y underscore val minus 15 right now remember this is just like you know what we had an x val plus 15 so it's just like change y value by minus 15 by 15 minus 15 actually so with this code let's see what happens now remember this is going to run quite fast i'm expecting an entire grid to appear for me and indeed it does right but let's say just to say get an idea of what's going on let's say i for now i comment out this tracer and the you know this update uh, mechanism which means it will draw slowly if i drew that now what's going to happen is that you'll see the picture actually getting drawn it first draws one row next it comes back and draws a second row right it's actually quite nice to look at right then it comes back again draws the third row and so on and so forth right the reason it's working this way is because here we have got a for loop which draws the column inside the for loop which draws all the rows now be very 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 careful about the indentation you have to be sure on when which loop ends remember the inner loop ends at this point if by mistake i again indented you know i intended let's indented these lines this is going to mess up completely because my inner loop has become uh, you know it's actually drawing it like this right so you'll have to think through why what's going on but this is not what we wanted right what's really happening is the y value is changing per iteration 
I'm not getting my grid that I wanted, right? So the reason I must be careful is because this entire thing, remember, is outside the inner repeat loop. And you can again go back to, you know, so let's just, so I'm going to turn on my tracer again. Uh, you know, this and stop this. Right, so indentation is very, very important here. Be careful on that. But now if I run this, without the tracer, I mean, without the updates, notice how quickly I get this entire grid. And, and this is really cool, right? Uh, so again, the, to understand this better, uh, my suggestion would be go back to this code here. Remember, we had the inner repeat loop and then we have the outer repeat loop. And in Python, the only way to demarcate all this is through indentation, which means that the statements that are not part of the inner loop but part of the outer loop must be indented back to the same level as the inner loop, right? So uh, this part has to be very, very clear. But apart from this, I think this code is relatively okay. Uh, I'll be happy to hear your feedback. I hope you like this. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.